Well, it was, it was funny because I was going to ask you all if we were to pick out anything from the morning session, what did you come away with at this point? Anything that you picked up that seemed interesting uh, that you uh, that you maybe didn't know before or something that you would like to share with others? Anybody? Four eyes. I'm sorry? The four eyes. The four eyes, yeah. The four eyes of transformational leadership. I mean, that's like a Jeopardy question, right? I don't even, I mean, that's like a $2,000 Jeopardy question right there to get any of those. Anybody else? Derek, is a lot of things or anything specific? Well, no, just, just what I might need to work on, like my I, the uh, where I fell short on the little scoring thing that we have here. Uh, individual, the I, idealized influence. Right. That area, gaining that trust. That That's huge with us, because like we said before, our, our guys, um, because they've been, I guess you could say, beaten down over the years, Yes, sir. prior to our the new administration coming on board, they don't trust anything. How many of you would say that trust in and of itself is probably the number one thing that needs to improve in order for a culture or for transformation to change in your organization when it comes right down to it? I mean, if you don't have the trust of your superiors, if you still look at them in a, as a hierarchy and that's not going to flatten out and, and actually encourage people for their ideas. And I know just talking to, to Anthony here, I mean, he seems to have a very progressive department at Aventura, people taking on different projects, people stepping back, who traditionally were the ones that said, do it this way, this way, and this way, and are actually encouraging others to step up and to get involved in different projects and whatnot, if I understood you correctly. Right. Yeah, so trust is huge. What did we say trust was? It was a... Consistency of yeah. I knew if I said enough letters, you'd get that. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's a consistency of behaviors. And trust is something that's earned, something that comes over time. Uh, we sometimes ask people to trust immediately, and we do so with a bit of trepidation. Right? Stacy, trust me. Sorry. You haven't given me any consistent behavior. You haven't done anything to prove yourself. I haven't been able to connect the dots with you if you actually say what you're going to do, all of that kind of stuff. So saying, getting somebody's trust right away is tough. It can be done. Yes, sir? I just wanted to touch on one thing and see what your ideas are. I, I've been told that, um, you know, I see a lot, of, we, we've attended a lot of leadership classes. Right. Um, we're, we're always asked, you know, how do you, what do you? What's your leadership style? What's your leadership style? Um, my chief said something interesting to me that I remember. He said, he said that you know it's not you don't uh, say what type of leadership style you use. It's your subordinates, their perception is yeah. what counts. How they see, um, like say for instance, I might think I'm a, a authoritarian, authoritarian. But they may see me as, you know, uh, something else. You know? A servant leader. Yeah, servant leader. <laughs> Doubtful, but so that big of a difference. The perception of your sure. your employees or or your uh, subordinates, how they look at you, mm -hmm. is, is, is truly what your leadership style is. Do you, do you agree with that? I abs I mean, what am I supposed to do? So like, hey, get ready, because I'm going to lay some situational stuff on you. Or right now, I'm going to be a transactional leader and ask you to do this, that, and I think it's absolutely in the, uh, in the eyes of the people who would be your followers. I mean, we said that earlier this morning, leadership doesn't exist unless you've got followership. And unless you have tremendous, well, I shouldn't say tremendous, you can build that up. And unless you have that all-important word, influence, which is kind of what we're going to... Thank you for that segue, Derek. That was perfect. Uh, but no, I believe. Anybody uh, have any other opinions on that? Yes, sir. I think one thing that, that I've taken from the beginning, I think Renato um, shared it with us that he does with his guys, is at us as in a leadership position or as supervisors, we're evaluating our subordinates. Many a times we don't allow them to evaluate us. And that's also going to improve us as a leader. And not only that, but as a person, you might learn something about yourself that you never had a clue that you were putting out. They grasp it and, hey, by the way, so-and-so, this is 
This is my observation. This is my evaluation on you. What was that called on the Johari window? That was your open area. Right? And, but your blind spot would be something that you don't even know about yourselves that yes. other people teach you. Mm -hmm. Anti-leadership abilities also exist, such as blaming others, talking behind others' backs, mm -hmm. putting that facade on when you say that this is who you are, but in fact you're not. Right. You're not truthful. Ed, I'm sorry, you wanted to say something. It was going to say one way to increase feedback from, from your, uh, the officers you're working with, if you're critiquing an incident like a burglary in progress, if you start off with, I could have done this better, you know, taking a little bit of the blame or saying a better way that you realize that you did something that could have been done better, that will allow the other officers to open up and say, well, yeah, you, you maybe you were micromanaging this a little too much and telling us to set up this point, that point. Let the primary officer do that. Yeah. Soliciting authentic feedback is huge in building up your self-awareness and building up trust with people. I'm glad that you guys got that so much out of that, or at least it sparked this conversation. Uh, positional influence, is it important? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Is it overused? Yes. Many cases. In what ways? I'm the boss for me to do this Okay. So in order to be, it's easier almost to be an autocrat. Can't you be an autocrat with civilians in it? Yeah. Because of your position? Yes. Yeah. It's a little bit easier when you have positional influence. Um, it can be way overused and not used for the correct purposes, but in a sense, um, it is a form of influence. If, though, we identify specific skills, if you really drill down, if you make the choice to want to learn more about those skills, you can improve upon them. There is absolutely no question about it. Anybody disagree? I haven't said what skills they are yet, but I think, let's just talk, for example, listening. Listening, we could drill down, and what's, uh, uh, if we drill down on the concept of listening, what components make up fabulous listening? Good empathetic listening. Active listening. Active listening. Active listening. So what, what are the components of active listening? Uh, acknowledgement. Okay. So acknowledgement of the other person, right? What else? Taking notes. Taking notes. Is that something we can learn, Lenny? Absolutely. Can we use these uh, these these exchanges where we're with body language and yes, I understand and all that? So you can really drill down and get down to the little bits and pieces of a lot of these skills and be able to put them together if that's what you decide is important to you. If that's what you decide. Let's take a closer look. Uh, so I talked about positional influence. You can fill in the blanks if you wish, but I think you get the idea. Your job, position, or title, authority. Who's my uh, Colin Powell um, uh, aficionado here? Yes. Yeah, Colin Powell uh, talked about that. Um, to be able to talk, to take off the uniform, to be able to take off the badge. Uh, well, he was talking about military. But take off all the signs of positional power and still be able to get people to want to follow you. Even if it's out of curiosity alone. People who think they're leaders just because they've got position are not leaders. No. Yes, sir. Just curious, was, was he a short guy? Yes. The young guy? No. Younger than you, though? No, he's one month older than I am. Well, that would be... It fits a lot of categories and classifications, people that behave that way. Yeah, good point. Good point. Some people, because of their physical appearance and stature, can demand more influence than others. Great point. Thank you. I mean, I'm usually inclined to listen to great big people that look like they could kick, you know, out of me. And this guy, he's pointing over to you, Larry. <laughs> Peace, love, Woodstock. Okay. All right. Uh, the last one is unlike position or domineering, we're talking about those, those great qualities of trust, support, and collaboration. And it's an earned thing, right? So... If you feel that there's some, and we're going to talk about what are these skills, and there's a lot of them, but we'll, we'll, I'll put you to the test to see if you, what you come up with, and I'll compare them against my list. The I element. The I, when you speak with a, what I mean by the I element is that you value who you are. You value what you have to put forth. You see yourself as a vital person that can provide good things to others through your emotional and through your social skills. The you element says to other people that you are a valuable resource, 
When you're talking about I and you, and of course the we element, what's that? What? The collective. Not only am I, I feel good about myself and what I'm doing and exhibit positive behavior, you add value to what we're trying to accomplish here, and the we is that we can work on this together to accomplish it. Excellent. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do is you've got a blank uh, uh, graph, or for lack of a better word, in your booklets there. If you would, I'd like you to discuss this with the person next to you. Uh, as a partner, you guys can triple up. Try to come up with as many specific emotional and social interpersonal skills as you can. So try to be as specific as possible rather than just listening. Maybe pick out a component of listening, like paraphrasing. Right? The important part of listening, being able to summarize what somebody else says. The more specific you are, the better. Okay? I'll give you a few minutes to do that. 